Hello, in this tutorial series on Tinkercad, I'm going to show you how you can build a basic object um, using the shapes and tools in Tinkercad, and then also prepare it for 3D printing and to create it. Now, in the previous videos, I've showed you how to create a Tinkercad account, how to use um, the basic features um, in the build programs for um, viewing and measurement tools and how to manipulate the shape in the program. So now let's go ahead and get ready to build. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get rid of the um, blocks I had in the previous video by left clicking and dragging and highlighting them and hitting the delete button or backspace button. And I'm going to go ahead and hit X and get rid of that ruler so you can see from the beginning everything I'm going to do. So I'm going to go to the ruler, left click on it, come down to the bottom left corner of my work plane and click and now I have my X and Y axis. Let's get a box and then left click on it and drag it out and left click on the work plane. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a basic house. I'm going to change the uh, width to 80. I'm going to change the length to 50 and I'm going to change the height of the box to 50. So now I have a basic house structure uh, that I'm creating. Now I'm going to left click on it and move it where it's easier to view. So now the next step of my house is to build a roof. Well, if you'll see on the menu over here, there is a roof shape, but if you left click and drag it, well, it's not gonna go on top. And if I move it over, it's just not gonna work. So the next step is you're gonna want to put it on top of the box. Now you could take the pyramid and go up uh, to the height, drag it up, and you could, you could click on your box and say, oh, it's 50 millimeters. So I could click on the roof and say, go up to 50 millimeters. Um, and you could do that uh, and then you could come over to the corner of uh, the box and then kind of roughly drag the roof to the other corner and maybe it's perfect maybe it's not um, but I think that method is not really a good idea so I'm gonna hit delete the best thing to do is go to the top right where it says work plane go to the top of the box and notice when I put my mouse on top of the box it shows a work area and now what I can do is work on top of the box without having to worry about the height now I can click on the roof and bring it out on top of the box now we already know that the width was 80 and we already know that the length was 50 and now we can make our roof as tall as we want maybe let's make it 30 and now if you want um, to put it perfectly aligned all you have to do is left click and drag a box and highlight everything on the screen go to the alignment tool and say okay I want it perfectly aligned here and then I want it perfectly aligned here um, and now my objects are perfectly centered so I'm gonna go ahead and click on work plane and then click on the surface now notice they're two different colors if you want to put them together you're gonna to have to left click and highlight both objects and go up to this icon that says group. This group icon makes it become one object. So technically now I have a rough image or 3D three-dimensional image of a house that I could go 3D print right now and it would come out to being 80 millimeters wide by 50 millimeters in length and 80 millimeters in height. So we need a few more things. Maybe we want a chimney. So I can take a box and I don't think I really need to use uh, the work plane tool. And I can say, okay, I want it to be 10 millimeters wide. Same thing with the length, 10. And now I could take the um, cone and drag it up. And I can just visually place the chimney wherever I want. And then I can left click, highlight everything, and hit group. So now I got a chimney. Now if I want a door, I can take a box and bring it out. And any object, and I already have one, and I'll show you in a minute, can become a cutting tool. So if I come up to that shape, and instead of it being a solid, I can select a hole, and it becomes transparent. Now if I drag this um, box into the house, you'll see that it's actually going to cut into that box however far I drag it in. Now that's a pretty big door, but maybe let's make it 15 millimeters. Um, and now what I can do is I can left click and highlight everything and hit group and it's going to cut out in the shape that door for me. Same thing with the windows. Um, if I want I can go ahead and grab a pre-built cube that's already been selected as a whole and we can make our windows let's say 
uh, seven by seven by 10. And then I can come over to here and raise it up wherever I want. Uh, and again, we should keep some kind of symmetry. We know that that, that cube was 20. So um, let's just keep that at 10. All right, now you can go Control C, Control V. If you want two windows, Control C, Control V. And I can just continuously paste um, my object wherever I want. And I've got some windows that I'm putting in the house. Now I can um, do the same thing. I'm going to do Control C, Control V. And now I can raise the window up. And here we go, Control C and V. And then I can just hit Control V, which is just pasting, and Control V and pasting. Now I could do the alignment tool if I wanted to, but I'm not. I'm just going to highlight everything and I'm going to say group. And so there, I've got a rough house that I've drawn in the program. Um, and as you can see, I've created it. Now the last step maybe is to put my name on it. So I can go on the back of the house and then hit that work plane tool, click on the back, come to text on the uh, shape menu on the right and drag and put the text on the back of the house. Remember, you can always resize the shape, or I'm sorry, the size of the text by dragging it um, and shrinking it uh, if it's too big or it's not big enough. So I'm gonna come over here and where it says text in the shape menu, I'm gonna just type in my name. And notice it's too big, so I can just come over in the top left corner and shrink it. Um, and then of course, you wanna make sure it's actually inside the object, so I'm gonna push it in. Now note if you're 3D printing, you're going to need to use supports because it's sticking out. Or if you make it a hole, it's actually going to cut my name inside of the uh, object like the windows and the door did. So if I left click everything and drag a box and select it and say group, you can see my name is cut out of the house. Um, and I'm going to hit work plane and click back on the build plane. There's lots of ways that you can use Tinkercad. And um, this was just a demo showing how you can actually build something in your mind um, and you can get a lot more creative with whatever you're trying to create. So I'm gonna go to the Tinkercad block in the top left corner and go back to the main menu um, and show you some things and how it can be done in the classroom. Uh, this is a project students are doing in a STEAM classroom where they're using parallel and series circuits and they're building cardboard houses. The students are actually designing their own furniture and 3D printing their furniture on their, their 3D printer in the classroom. This is a state model where you could create the state of Georgia and label all the regions, which is a second and eighth grade social study standard, and you could do topographical 3D maps of the state of Georgia. Uh, this is the atom structure uh, that we're doing in physical science. Um, and there's just a plethora of opportunities for what you could do in the program. You can make something that's, you know, going to solve a problem, be a new design, or show knowledge of a specific thing taught in the classroom. Thank you so much for watching this short tutorial, and I hope uh, it was helpful.